you guys. Right, let's get started. Okay, we're going to use the watercolour set. I love this. I haven't been using this for, for very long. I've just tucked into it today, actually. And it's fab. The vibrancy of the colours. They're terrific. Okay, so I'm just going to use the birthday one. So I'll use those. And, of course, this, this lovely set from Els and Charlene, the art journal set. That's really nice. I'm going to use some of the flowers from that as well. Okay. Right, so this is this is brand new actually. I have been using my sample set that's just here. Um, it doesn't have the packaging. And I've used this quite a few times now. And look how brilliant and clean it is. The quality of these stamps are amazing. Thank you, Els, for producing these in such good quality. They're brilliant. Okay, so when I get um, new packaging... I slice it down the right hand side because what I find is that when you undo the sticky bit it all sticks to stuff and all gets in the way so I just slice everything down the right hand side and then I can just slot it out like this and when I store it upright it all stays together more or less so that's what I do when I work with this with these goodies Okay, right, let's do some backgrounds first and I'll show you how you can, a couple of ideas how you can use these watercolours to create nice backgrounds. So bring in some water and first option is to just wet the paper. There's Joyce is here as well and I think I'll use... Oh, nice pink. Oh, see what, see what I mean? I'm just tapping this really lightly and it's just so vibrant. It's lovely. Really good quality, actually. So quite random. I might add a little bit more water as well. That's it. And just leave that for a couple of seconds. Mustn't forget about it. And I'll bring in another one. And then this one, I'm just going to do blobs of water, splashes of big blobs. And then with another brush, I can pick up some, just some straight colour and just blob it into the water. And it's quite nice when you go push it to the edge, push the colour to the edge because that's more vibrant. And then as it waters down with the water, it sort of gets a bit more thinner and lighter. I just love playing around with watercolours. Let's make them join together as well for interesting effects. This set, honestly, is a must-have, I think. <laughs> I mean, I was using, like, inks a lot of the time. But these watercolours are great. So I'm going to keep to my sort of cool colour palette. Let's do a purple... So it all sort of blends in. If you go too mad with colours. Rainbow's good, obviously. Can't beat a rainbow. But it's quite nice to just keep to cool colours or light colours. Or colours that sit next to each other on the colour wheel. So down here, let's have a... Oh, turquoise. Can't beat turquoise. So how are we doing? Can you hear me okay? And you see what I'm doing? Oh, Janet's watching. Janet lives next door to me. Hi, Janet. Thank you for your support. Oh, Elsie's there. Hi, Els. <laughs> oh, I can appreciate how difficult this is. Well, you make it look so easy. There. Can you get a closer look at this? Els and Esther and Suzanne make it look really easy. So it's nice to see you here as well. <laughs> and Joseph. Oh, I've seen you on lots of lives, Joseph. Thank you for watching me. <laughs> oh, Jodie, you've just popped up. And where are you from as well? Vancouver. Jennifer from Vancouver. <gasps> wow. I can't believe that other people from the other side of the world are watching this. Do some light green over here. 
It's really funny. I'm always crafting alone in my craft room. And then it's like I've opened the door and then all these familiar faces and friends have come in to join. <laughs> oh, thanks, Suzanne. She can hear me. That's good. It's wonderful, really. Thank you. Thank you for coming in to join me. I do like bright colours as well, I must admit. I do like bright colours. I'm a bit of a magnet for bright colours. So that's about it, I think. Let's go back to this pink one that's almost dry. So what we can now do with this is splash, just splash water over it. Like that. I noticed, Su Suzanne, Susan, Suzanne, when you're doing your splashes, you tap the brush like this. How do you do that? I can't make that work. Nothing comes off. I must be holding it wrong. So I have to be like a child and just flick with the br bristles. <laughs> I don't know how you manage to do that. Okay, and I'll also add in some paint splashes as well. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the pink splashes on that one. It's all about texture and playing and then when you've got these lovely backgrounds all you have to do is to add the stamps on and bingo you've got a card like that that's good now I've got a bright pink finger actually this one needs dabbing because there might be a little bit a little bit too much water on that one that's it and then I'll just let this one sit and I might even just give it a mist with these little mini misters. They're great, these are. That's it. That's all it needs. Right, I'm going to sit these over here, out of the way, just to let them do their thing. And then I've got some ones that I did earlier. This one, I just um, put water across the whole thing and just dabbed colour pigment in various places okay and then this one I did like a criss sort of a crisscross with the water and then just dabbed colour into that just to create sort of a bit of a pattern as well and then this is a real muted delicate one where I've just done the lines across as we did with the other pink one and then just misted it and you see that because it's really delicate I just I like the effect so you can have nice delicate ones and mad crazy ones as well like this so should we try stamping them so if we do the delicate one first and bring in my stamping platform right I'm not very good at reading the comments am I what do the misters do I saw that one that's this little jobby that's the Ranger one, and it's just a spritzer, but it's it mists more so, I think, a finer spray, as opposed to a bigger, chunkier one like this. It's sort of a, a heavier spray, and I've, there are some that's got like the pump action as well, isn't there? But this, this little mister is quite nice, gives a, a light spray. Okay, which way up do I like this to be? I think there. I think that'll be quite nice. So let's do uh, let's do the birthday wishes. This is the brand new stamp set. Oh, they're stiff to start with. They're stuck on. That's it. Peel that off. That's it. Place it down. Basically, to get it upright, if you can see the sort of backs of the D. And the B, they're a good sort of um, marker sort of thing. So that's pretty much upright. But if, you know, if it's about there, then it's leaning over to the right because I'm placing that at the, that angle. And, and likewise, if, if it's a sort of a bit over there, it's, it's not quite level. So just look at the T's, the, the backs of the D's and then the, the backs of the H's just to... Get your lettering the right way. Just a bit of a tip. That's it. Okay, let's go in with black for this one. 
me see what I'm doing here. Okay. Are you talking amongst yourselves? Pretty colours. Thanks, Jennifer. I will go through all the questions at the end. That's probably easier for me. <laughs> Instead of trying to answer them now. I can't read them. Little jobby, make me laugh. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where that came from. I haven't said that for a while. Little jobby. <laughs> okay, because this is watercolour paper, it needs a couple of couple of goes. Press my thing together. Oh, still not working. Ooh. Press it down a bit more. That'll do. And then, um, right, okay. What I'm going to do is stamp it again and get a spare piece of paper on here. Stamp that so I get rid of that first image and I want the second secondary stamped image. And I'm just going to move this damn, I'm supposed to move it that way. Um, because I've butted my paper up to the far right. I wanted to move it up there and I can't because the paper's there. So if I just sneakily cut a strip off, now I can. So just a tiny bit top, top left. I'm not very good with my right and my left. Left and my right, see? <laughs> oh, this must be a girl thing. A bit too much. That'll do. Give that a good press. Does anyone else have problems with their right and their left? I'm useless. Especially when I'm driving. If someone says, right, turn left here, I'm like all over the place. Which way is that? They have to point. My husband has to point. <laughs> Which way to go? Okay, so now we've got this sort of secondary stamp. Which gives it like a shadowing. Which makes it look bit zingy makes it look different right then let's let's get this one cleaned up and then what I can do as well with that is I can make it look zingy more with a bit of highlight Martine all the time with your left and right it's terrible <laughs> Oh good, glad I'm not the only one. Joseph, you won't have trouble with your left and right, will you? <laughs> right then, so I've got a paint pen here. Let's get it working. These are really good. And gel pens as well for adding the highlights. So I'm just going to add just a little stroke because it's quite a fine one. The, some of the thicker stamps are really good for doing this. But just little fine strokes and that makes it pop and zing a bit more so you can make these lettering stamps your own and do different things with them so all I have to do now is to cut that out and we've got a card basically so that's one idea there are also other ideas on the YouTube site, Elizabeth Craft Designs YouTube site. Um, the um, tutorial videos that I did for Hochanda are on there, so you can watch those back as well and get some more ideas. That way around, I think. Let's do this one. Let's see this one on a more crazy background of course you can use the embossing powders as well and I'll just use this because the heat tool is a bit noisy isn't it yeah there are a few Josephs isn't there Kathy <laughs> uh, needs to give this a try yeah Kathy go for it these stamps are really good if you like your backgrounds, like I do. And sometimes you make backgrounds and you 
they're not quite right so you chuck them away or it's not quite what you want or hasn't turned out right don't chuck them away just print a caption on them and job done yeah, so that one's quite nice it's quite sort of yeah positive vibes quite mad so that can be made into a card as well and I've done some more I've done some other ones as well I'll put this away I've done some earlier I had a little play so this one is the big big water splashes and then add pigment in and just let it do its own thing and then I've done this in silver embossing with some gems across at an angle that one and then there's another one here that's similar to the background that we did earlier and this is black heat embossing as well I did it in black because it's bolder so I wanted the black to stand out a bit more and just randomly put gems around it Ah, oh, Tracy's giving me hearts. Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> See those hearts. So that's quite nice. And it's 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 nice because you kind of make the card yourself. If you create the background with these lovely paints, you're making the whole card yourself as well. And then I have this one here that's a bright orange splashy background. And again, this is crying out for some highlights as well, isn't it? This one I'm thinking maybe not quite finished looking so we can definitely put highlights on this one as well make it pop and I've added the doodles on this card they're really good to help fill up the space as well and they they look nice in groups of three the doodles and use the different sizes as well that's quite nice you have a bigger one a medium one and a smaller one it just sort of creates movement put them at different angles and I quite like this sort of diagonal sort of design as well I quite like that and then another thing as well if I grab a pencil I can create my own little shadow line with the pencil there is room to do this on this stamp if you can't see this very well I will bring it to the camera okay so if you like these stamps you don't have them yet Els is offering us a 20% discount as of now until 1 p.m. on Thursday I think that's 24 hours which is really generous on because they're they're quite new well they're brand new so it's really generous so they will be 20% discount on the Elizabeth Craft Designs website on the European one and the American one the US one and you have to put in the code SUE20 make a note of that SUE20 oh Anna's done that on the bottom of the chat so that's good okay and you can do this with a black pen as well. I quite like pencil because it's softer. Sometimes it can look a bit over the top. So I quite like using a pencil as well. Can you see that? Okay. So that's another thing you can do. So you create shadows with your secondary stamp or you can draw, draw lines yourself. Okay. So that's another idea. Right, let's try something else. So these are all quick ideas. And then we'll take a bit more time. How much have I been? About 25 minutes. Take a bit more time and do another idea. So instead of watering, wetting my background with the br brush, I'm going to go straight into some splashes. I'm going to use this blue. Get my finger on the bristles again. <laughs> Does anyone else have trouble doing this? See, look, it's just not working. Must be doing something wrong. I 
don't know. It looks nice and elegant, and you, you don't get messy, but I can't do it. So I'm adding my splashes straight to the paper, and I'm going to mist those with the little mini mister. Good, glad you love the shadowing, Charlene. Thanks for that. There, let those droplets bleed. Give it a bit of shake. Let the ink move in the water. So that's quick, easy, delicate background because it dries a bit lighter as it as it it yeah it goes lighter as it dries. And then we shall put that to one side, and then we shall do some stamping as well of Charlene's stamps, Charlene Ellis's stamps. So we get these. I just love the leaves. The leaves are gorgeous. So if I put these close together, I'm going to cut them out so it doesn't matter where they go. So group them quite close together. Again, this one, look, I've cut it to the side. Just slots back in. Pick those up and we'll ink those with the archival ink because we're going to watercolour them afterwards and then this ink remains because it's permanent so we can do our lovely colouring. Nice splatter technique, thanks Jane! That's it, again this is watercolour paper so it's a bit textured, I need to do it a few times. Now when we've got that done, we can just turn it round and then we can do another group. Let's do these. I love the size of these stamps. They're quite sort of smallish and delicate. So I think small stamps are quite useful and I think very big stamps are quite useful. So I'm liking these. Let's just put a bit more on there. And then we'll do some water colouring. Let's get rid of this. Right. Are you still there? Are you still with me? Jackie Jasper is. Hi Jackie. Uh, does the ink stain the stamps? It does, it does more so on the smaller sets, actually. I don't have a proper archival ink cleaner. Um, I think you can get hold of that. But I find that the ink comes off the caption stamps really well, as you see with this one. It's just brand new looking still. So maybe it's in the... You know the plastic the, the material okay can you see my palette you can can't you that's good right I want to tell you a little uh, little secret tip this is one of my favorite watercoloring tips actually that I want to share with you is grab yourself a load of yellow can you see that okay this is some yellow and then if you just place in a little bit of black okay what you get is a beautiful green I love this tip I learned this at school actually because uh, I did art at school and I've never forgotten it because I just think wow how can black with a bit of yellow no yellow with a bit of black make green and it does it makes this lovely sort of natural green which is probably one of my favorite tones of green actually I think it's lovely I mean we're lucky here we've got some really nice greens here but this is like a, um, a sort of a warmer green I suppose so let me paint it on see if you can see what I mean it's a lovely green so there's a good tip for you try that yellow and black makes 
a terrific green so I'm doing this quite quickly because you can and you go over the edges do go over the edges artists do go over the edges so you go over the edges because we're going to cut these out so we're not going to go right up to the black line because we actually want the black line so if you paint over the edges then you won't have a little bit of white paper around the edge okay and it hides a multitude of sins then you don't have to be so specific with your cutting let's get some darker tones in here as well that's it I like a variation of color and of course just use the yellow as well they're flowers so to deal with the flowers I do like this purple such lovely bright colors and don't be afraid to mix the colors either because they are quite bright so they're fantastic to use as they are but I find that sometimes when you're doing flowers and nature and things like with this green it's quite nice to have sort of more muted -y sort of tones so mix in a bit of black calms down the brightness sometimes so with these flowers I'm just dabbing a dark color in the middle of them it's coming out quite blue now isn't it and then I'm just going to bleed that color out with just water on my brush and then I get some more of that purple that's it and water that down as well so it's not so strong and then just dab in the purple I'm just dabbing really because I do like specks of white I've managed to cover all that leaf but I've just got a couple of specks of white on there and I just think the little specks of white sort of they're, they're kind of like shine marks I think and they just lift the water colouring so you don't have to colour everything in I find the little bits of white look quite sort of nice and fresh looking again I'm just going around the edges as well just so I can cut them out okay and it's layering as well it's all about layering I'm going to go over that bit put a bit more blue there I like using thin color and layering them up and then your work I think looks delicate and fresh looking can you see what I mean can you have a look at that love your coloring elves oh thank you it's getting darker and darker I think it's starting to rain now so um, I will post these afterwards so you can have a good look at them as well so then we're going to cut these out got my little scissors do a few so yes i'm loving these stamps they're great so cut these out when i cut things out i have a smallish pair of scissors and i put my card right up the scissor mouth quite far I'm not snipping at the tips to get detail um, I find you get more control if you put the paper right up to the jaw of the scissors and then move the paper around as you cut the scissors more or less can stay still but you move the paper around and that way you can get quite delicate cutting out and then go over any thicker bits that are left behind okay so shove the paper in the jaws and as you close the jaws move the paper around and then you can get you know wiggle it around all those little wiggly areas it doesn't take long either and it's quite therapeutic to do I find and I love the fact that we've made embellishments we've got embellishments now and lovely leaves and flowers to add to our cards and planner pages and everything so I know you don't want to watch me cut loads of out so this is the background and it's drying really nicely and delicate it almost looks like frost 
I think but it's still a bit damp so I did do one earlier here and I actually cut it out of the nesting nesting dies I keep my dies in planner box they fit in there quite well and I love these planner boxes I don't want to chuck it out <laughs> yep so I've grabbed the again here cut the side off so I can get to the product and it doesn't all fall away so find a nice area this bigger size is, is really nice for cards I think I do believe us Brits might make slightly larger cards than the the Americans do we seem to love a 5x7 five 5x7 by seven. Five by seven is a really nice size I think and square cards as well obviously I'm just grabbing a 5x7 five by seven here I think this is a really nice size but I have a feeling that this is quite big I think for you crafters in America is that right I'd love to know so this is uh, an A6 size which is a bit smaller and I think this is more popular in America what do you think can you help me out there Jennifer's liking the 5x7 so I just think that's kind of uh, maybe more of a notelet size perhaps but I could be wrong, I could be wrong. I'm sorry if I'm assuming things. Okay, so we have our background cut out. It's a nice, nice delicate, frosty background. And then let's bring in the flowers here that I've cut out already in the similar colours. And we need a caption, don't we? Let's do a caption. So let's bring in the stamp set again. My desk is getting covered with stuff. What have I done with them? Oh, the stamping platform's hidden them. Here we go. So I'm going to take this birthday one here. So hopefully on each set you get a variety of sort of sizes of captions. So on this one you've got the prominent sort of big sort of caption here and this one's quite big as well and then these two are a bit smaller spaces and the happy you can just have fun with that repeating and playing with that on your background. So I'm going to have a go with this one. I need some more watercolour paper. I'll use this. Let me bring this back in. Right then, another technique, instead of using the archival inks, uh, we can use Elsie's paints again. Elsie's paints, is that the right way up? Yes. So, I'm painting the back of the, well the raised bit obviously, the back of the stamp. I'm getting a nice thick amount of paint with a little bit of water. So it kind of sticks a bit to the raised bits and I'm going to bring in some purple as well. So I'm doing it similar colours to my flowers. Get as much paint on there as you can, not too much water, get the paint down and then we'll get a better impression hopefully. Okay, get our mister. Don't want to mist it on the paper do i just a little bit of mist okay and i might leave it there actually and just put the paper on top <laughs> hold it down give it a rub are you still there janet that's good <laughs> tracy's still giving out the hearts <laughs> i've noticed you do that tracy and i try and do some thumbs up over the top <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that every time I see Tracy putting hearts I'm like yeah I'm giving it with the the thumbs up as well <laughs> so 
So there we have our printed, painted birthday. I'm just going to give it a tiny spritz as well. There, look how nice that is. Like all different colours as well. That's, that's stamped out really well. I'm pleased with that. And I just wanted the birthday as well. So that's another technique that you can use. Obviously it works better with the thicker letters as well. Okay, so when that's dry, you can cut it out like I've done with this one. So this one's a slightly more watery. So they come out all different, don't they? They're not the same either. Definitely not the same. So let's build up our card then. So we've got our background and I've put this on a double stacking of foam pads. Again, I think it's nice to cut the letters out sometimes, the words out, just makes it look different and I've got to work to my mat so I can line things up. And interesting, I'll put it about there I think. And then we can have fun with some flower arranging. They all ended up right over here. Okay, let's get my glue stick out. My trusty glue stick, which I absolutely love. Okay, so we've got three sizes of flowers, so I'll go for the bigger ones. And I'm going to put those on foam pads as well. So it's got this one here, just one pad's enough. And I don't suppose it matters which way they go. The little stamens are falling down, so maybe it goes that way. So I'm just going to tuck that probably about there. I love this, doing a bit of flower arranging. Tucking things in, layers. It's great, isn't it? I love it. This is the joyful part of crafting, I think. And you see all your hard work come together as well. It is fun. It is fun, Catherine. Sorry if I'm not looking at the messages very, very much. It is fun. I'm glad you're here with me as well. So I've got my three bigger ones in place in a kind of a triangle because that's really pleasing for the eye. In threes and in like a triangle. And now I'm going to pop the smaller flowers underneath on the bottom layer. So I like the pointy bit on this one, so I might just have that coming down into my birthday word. And then this one I shall put upwards, up there. And then these little ones, they're adorable. If I stick that on my scalpel blade, then I can poke it in. Oh, poke it in where I want it and move it around. I always overlap the flowers slightly because it looks more natural, I think. So instead of having them all separate, I love a cluster. I love them just slightly overlapping. And then we can have fun with the leaves. And they're on the bottom layer as well. So I'll just tuck them in. I love the two different shapes of these leaves as well. They're great. So you've got these taller leaves. We can even overlap that one. This one's going to cut the stem off so I can tuck it in. Overlap that one so it almost looks like a three leaf leaf, if you get what I mean. <laughs> can you see all right? Eels, eels are here. Hi, your stamps are lovely, Eels. <laughs> this is gorgeous, Sue. Oh, thanks, Eels. Okay, uh, something's got to come over this way. So we've got an upright there, and it's nice to mimic the corner with leaves shooting off this way. It's just like a design feature. It and then join these two leaves together there and we've got to have some greenery coming down the bottom 
so tuck that in there. It's going to go under. Do you know what? I'm just going to cut this secondary leaf off, which we can do, just so I can get it under there a bit closer, like that. That's it. And then this crying out for a leaf here there so it's it's just like flower arranging and i just love this i get excited about doing this yep we'll have a little one over there that's going to cut that stem off as well so i can fit it under that's what i like about the foam pads as well because you can slide things under and obviously you can do this for your planner pages and your scrapbook layouts, you know, insert a nice little picture. So you can use these captions for other things as well. Does that look all right? Is that about enough? Would that be too mad if we stuck another leaf in there? I think so. I quite, just, I quite like just that leaf there. Would that look too busy if that, yeah, too much leafage? This one here. That might be quite nice because then it looks bigger than, yeah, than that one. So this is how I design things. Offer it up and so you can move things around. I'm being a bit brave because I'm sticking down as I go, but I would probably offer it up before I stuck it down. And then we've got all the different layers. Can you see the different layers? With our caption popping up, hopefully. And then we need our five by seven card blank to pop it onto and i like to use a glue stick for this because when you do your watercolor backgrounds they can warp slightly some more than others so i like to put plenty of glue so it can straighten out on the card base and if you use wet glue you're going to make it could make it buckle even more so offer it up to the fold, my fold's across the top, that's it, there and then I can trim that, I'm leaving a nice white border around the edge because that always looks nice as well, makes the card bigger and you can get the benefit of this another layer of this nice rounded corner piece. I love this technique, Janet says. Thank you, Janet. That's it. So use these stamps, caption stamps, with all your other products as well. Okay, now this is lifting a bit on this corner. So another trick I like to do is grab my craft knife or scalpel blade, pick up a bit of that glue from the glue stick and just tuck it under so you can repair those really sticky up areas even very slight areas as well you can slide a bit of glue under let's get all these little bits out of the way okay there so i've just used the birthday word as it is Okay, so that's another fun thing to do. So if you bring in what we've done again, so don't forget 20% discount on these stamps. And I have just used this, this stamp only. I've just sort of showed you the versatility of this stamp set. You don't need them all. You can be lovely and buy them all. Obviously, you get even more options then. But you can do quite a few things with just, with just these. This one might be a nice, sort of, almost like a framed image, can't it? That one. I just thought that getting carried away now. This one needs something else as well, doesn't it? So I'm just thinking I could actually... I could actually paint a shadow line 
on this one because this is, vibes is even a, a bigger word so you, it will take there's room between the letters as well for some shadowing have fun with them experiment there's versatility there isn't there with these stamps well thank you for joining me guys I hope I did all right. <laughs> I was really nervous earlier. But it's great fun. It's lovely to have you here in my craft room. And from, you know, all over the world as well. It's amazing. So that sort of makes that pop as well. We need that white pen as well. This one, because it's thicker, I'm going to do a line all the way down this time. And not just the little highlight at the top. I'm going all the way down the thick strokes of those letters. There, it almost looks like it's floating on the sea now, doesn't it? Or, or flying in the sky. <laughs> okay.